Hey little lovelies, we're out there in Jared Fox here. I'm gonna continue with what if Deku was reborn several times. Uh, basically where I left off is where Deku was getting a massive headache because his previous quirks and one for all so for one one for all one for all were clashing together and fighting with each other because they both want to have Deku as them. But because of that, Deku is having a massive headache right now. Each time he hears the rollerblades of a robot coming, he gets so furious that the second that it gets close to him, he breaks it into nothing. As both quirks are still fighting until one of the successors of One For All and his previous quirk basically said both of them need to cut it out because right now they're causing Deku a lot of pain which could cause them a failing chance to get into UA from the massive headache that he's getting. And these two were Nanashimura and uh, Louis. Louise. Lewin. I can't say the name right. Darn it, Pass Rod. You had one job making names I could read, but failed. Anyways, um, Lewis, I'm gonna say it. Um, Lewis and Nanashimura basically told both quirks to knock it off and that they should work together instead of fighting each other for control. Because right now they're causing Deku the entire test. As Deku stopped getting a headache and used both quirks elegantly to the point where it doesn't even look like two separate quirks. Like people could tell that they were like two separate quirks, but something was wrong with both quirks. But now it doesn't even look like two quirks. It looks like literally one quirk that had several things or several quirks working together in this one child. And it looks so magical. The electricity that one for all gives and also the abilities that the previous Dekus had work so well that it they complement each other so beautifully. Deku took down one pointers, two pointers, three pointers until he hears a scream from a girl that he recognizes. As he looks around and looks behind him and sees a massive robot and then he looks down. He sees the girl that he technically bumped into and he helped up and apologized to. Deku felt so much guilt because in one case he could have caused that robot to fall in another case it could be the zero pointer and he realized that the zero pointer is crushing buildings while Deku was not so he realized zero pointer got to go as he uses the quirks of his previous life and attacks him all the quirks manifested into one single blow as the second that the robot exploded not even like one second it was like a millisecond it was a massive explosion but right then and there Deku literally flew down as fast as he can lift up the rubble with amounts of strength and power and grabs Uraraka leading her out and running away before the robot could explode and that was surprising to Deku because he knows that he cannot run that fast he felt like he broke several sound barriers which could cause the end of the world but he knew that he didn't break any because if so people would have been shot into other directions as he was surprised and then after that the robot exploded he people see Deku holding Uraka as Deku asks are you okay and like the stern leaderish voice and she said she's fine just her ankle hurts as everyone hears okay that's all for now if you did not get a lot of points then I'm sorry you have to wait till next year test is over as they all heard that Deku puts Uraka down on the floor gently to make sure her ankle did not did not hurt 
any more that it would have. As everyone sees like this old nice woman with a needle as a walking stick comes up and asks if anyone's hurt and gives out candy to other people that were not hurt. As Deku said over here and the nurse comes over, gives Uraka a kiss and then gives both Deku and Uraka candy, saying that they did good and told Uraka to be more careful. As Uraka said, okay, as one guy said, isn't that the uh, recovery girl? The nurse hero? I don't know what's her hero alias thing. As everyone leaves to go home, Deku immediately going home and feeling like he almost failed the entire thing, and then immediately goes into his mindscape. Deku looks and sees a lot of people, and... All of them are pretty nervous. Because, for once, they cause Deku to have more problem than solving the problem and causing even more problems. As Deku basically lashes out on them and Nanashimura and Lewis were behind him because they know that they did not cause any problem. As Deku basically finished off lashing out on all of them, they were all surprised because Deku looked scarier than the worst villain possible, which is all for one. Did I say his name right? If so, I am happy. If not, I am sad. As Deku literally gave so much anger and rage at that moment, but then said, I am not mad. I am disappointed. Because you guys are grown ass adults. Well, I am a fucking teenager. I am literally acting like an adult while you guys were fighting in my fucking noggin. As Deku, like, said, like, Deku breathes in and out for like two seconds and then calms down. They were surprised because Deku never lashed out from how long they have known him. The original quirks of his previous lives have been there for his entire life, but awakened because of the sludge villain. One for all has saw his memories, and they see him as a nice person. But they never saw him like pissed off. They realized never to do that again or else Deku would kill them. Sorry for talking into that voice. Yeah, <sighs> never mind. Next couple of days, Deku has been training with Mirio, one of the big three, and then Mirio invites two other people. One with elf ears with dark bluish black hair, and another person. She had light blue hair and a bubbly personality. She continuously asks questions about Deku and his powers. Saying that she has saw the entire entrance exam with some of the teachers and said that his quirk was remarkably amazing, but hard. As Deku said, it was hard to manage because he feels like t separate people stuck into one sometimes. As Deku is basically holding a smile, but noticeably is pissed off. Because of what happened. And now that he knows that literally these people have saw him in pain in the entrance exam. He's more pissed at the quirks right now. Because he doesn't know how many people have saw that and laughed at him. Because of it. Because he doesn't want to get bullied. Like he has a good muscle mass on him that he will beat the shit out of anyone who bullies him. Or anyone that is very close to him. Like, boom, you bully someone close to him, you're dead. Six feet under the ground. And no, I do not mean that Deku will purposely kill you. Actually, he would. In one case. Anyways, I'm staying in one spot. Uh, Deku goes to school. He does know the big three now, but keeps it a secret from other people. Because he doesn't know how... Like, surprising it is. 
as Deku and All Might do get to know each other more, but <laughs> but Deku doesn't like him that much because of what happened, but slowly is getting over it. As Deku walks in, he does hear a familiar voices that he heard. One of the blue-haired boy with glasses, and the other a spiky blonde hair red eye boy. As Deku was immediately in anger and in complete defeat, he sucks it up and puts on a smile. At that moment, Deku regrets even going into that class. Because right then and there, Bakugo starts making fun of him and trying to turn people against him right then and there. As Deku had enough and uses his quirk. As at that moment, Bakugo gets a shockwave of electricity. Well, not electricity. Well, kind of. And bite marks from snakes. As Deku said, you should not have done that. I cannot do a snake voice. I'm sorry, guys. As Deku is noticeably angry at that moment, people have understand that do not, if you do not mess with him, he doesn't mess with you. As Bakugo does not get the hint several times and continuously tries to bully him and turn people against him on the first day of school. Other people are like, yeah, no, we're not fucking with him. Uh, you could die alone in the grave. We want to live. As literally, one of the classmate A members literally says that out loud. And Bakugo was in immediately anger and tried to attack the person who said that, which was Minoru Mineta. Deku knows that Minoru doesn't have the right purpose of being in 2 class 1A in the first place, but he doesn't believe that Mineta should be kicked out. He does see potential in Mineta, so he does save Mineta. As Bakugo gets grabbed by the neck and slammed against the wall, being told that if he tries to do that again, he Deku would not hesitate to bury him in the ground alive. I'm gonna leave that off right then and there, sorry guys this is getting too long.